Um, a reminder that I'll send out a link to the recording as well as a link to uh, a document with resources and websites that we look at in this session. Uh, and a sign up form for the remaining two sessions. Next week, uh, or in two weeks, we have YouTube for news. And our final session at the end of the month is um, election tools for newsrooms. So today, uh, uh, just a quick reminder too, there's my email address at the bottom of this slide and my Twitter handle if you want to reach out to me with any questions or comments. Uh, also, if you're using any of these tools, please uh, tell me about it. I'm always looking for examples that I can um, pass on to um, colleagues in the Google News Initiative about how journalists are, are using these tools. This is the um, Google News Initiative homepage. Uh, you can find more training modules that cover these topics uh, and, and other topics. So today uh, we're looking at advanced search. Some of this is going to be um, repeated content from our uh, tools for student newsroom session and from our misinformation session. So looking at Google search operators, um, and image searches, but I've added on some more uh, in-depth um, uh, tips as well. So it will be a bit of a refresher for those of you who were here for the previous two sessions, uh, as well as some new material. If you do have questions throughout the session, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And I will pause periodically for questions and um, I'm, eager to hear as well, uh, not just questions, but comments or your own tips, if you might have them. Um, I'd love if you could share those. So I'll talk about Google search operators and then some uh, search tips for social media sites, platforms. Then a, a few uh, specialized search tools. So these are not Google tools, but uh, open source or other um, private search tools, but they're all uh, uh, free of cost or at least a freemium model to get started on. And then I'll talk about uh, Google Trends, going a little more in depth into Google Trends. Um, so just a recap of the search operators that we've looked at. Again, these are commands that tell Google to search for keywords in specific ways. So within a certain website or domain, um, in relation to other words or search terms, um, within searching for keywords within a specific file type only. Uh, I'll run through some more examples, um, but then look at some other combinations of how you can uh, use these search operators for more fine-tuned searches and specific reporting cases or questions. Um, so first of all, the site search operator, um, this is a way to search for keywords or phrases from a specific site or domain. So a uh, country domain, for instance, um, let's say I'm searching for uh, articles about Ovidio Guzman, Mexican former drug lord. A general search like this turns up, first of all, Wikipedia and then some US news sources. I could add site MX to see only results uh, with my keywords there um, from Mexican domains. So maybe you're looking for more local or regional information about a subject. You can see each of these is a, um, a, a Mexican news source about, um, about my subject. This can also be a way to avoid um, ads or listicles. Um, this was another example, looking for volunteer opportunities in Kenya. I might execute a search like this. You can see here, I've got a lot of sponsored content at the top. And then a sort of series of websites that seem to me to be sort of amalgamation websites or listicles eight best, top 10 programs, et cetera. Um, if I search for volunteer, but within the Kenyan domain only, you can see that each of my results 
is uh, an organization based in Kenya with a Kenyan domain looking for volunteer opportunities, looking for volunteers. Uh, often this is more effective than using a site's search function. Um, I'll show you an example. Um, if we go to the Northwest Company, this is a Canadian company that operates stores in remote communities in the north. So maybe I'm interested, you can see here I'm searching in the search bar at the top right in, you know, how are they addressing climate change? What is this company's concerns around climate change? When I use the, the search function on this page, though, you can see that I'm getting, um, you know, results for change and for climate, not necessarily just climate change. Um, I'm not sure how many results total I have here. It looks like five pages, so maybe, you know, say 50 or so results. Um, if I were to take this URL, so I'm just going to copy at the top northwest.ca. I'll put my search term here and then search site northwest.ca. Note that um, I don't need to have the HTTPS or even the www. I could just execute the search like this and that would work the same. Note as well that site must be lowercase. When I try and do this search with site capitalized, I've done this by accident sometimes, it, it doesn't work. But you can see here these results. Um, so I don't necessarily actually have more, um, possibly because it's searching just for the phrase climate change and not climate or change. Um, but each of these is this exact phrase um, from a company under the website northwest.ca. Um, I see we have a question um, or a hand raise. Can we return search results with fewer ads? It clutters up the search. Um, so thanks for the question. I find that, um, so there's no sort of um, magic single way to exclude ads from your search results that I know about. But I found that using the search operator uh, reduces or eliminates the ads. Using search operators in general reduces or eliminates the ads that I see um, because it's just a more, um, a more specific search. And it's telling Google, OK, if an ad doesn't have, uh, isn't from a specific site, as we saw, <clears throat> I won't see that ad. Or if an ad is not from a specific domain, um, I won't see that ad. So if you are getting a specific ad, um, you could try a, a domain search and see if that helps eliminate um, your ads. Um, I also, and this came up in a previous training as well, the um, site plus in URL operator. Um, so one example, and this is kind of getting at the social media search stuff, if I search like this, um, this will return results from Facebook um, that has groups in the URL, so re results that are groups within Facebook, and then my keywords. Um, so in this case, my keywords simply Running Club Toronto, and each one of these results is a public group within Facebook. So using um, the in URL operator, <clears throat> it helps if you have an idea already about how a site is indexed. Here's another example. Um, I'll, if I go to the, well, we can stay on this page. Um, I'm on a company website here, uh, Northwest Company. Um, I could look at uh, a page like this, quarterly reports. So maybe I'm interested in, um, you know, financial reporting or quarterly reports, or I'm trying to find some sort of information within the financial filings of this company. I can look for clues within the URL to search for um, reports that are indexed 
under uh, uh, in a specific way on a website. I hope that's making sense. Um, so for example, here I see the word documents. So I could experiment with this in the URL. Site northwest.ca, uh, yep. And maybe in URL, documents, and then try my keyword here. So here I, I get 44 results. So that's actually more than my initial search um, under site northwest.ca with climate change. Um, but you can see here each of these is a is a document that's been uploaded to that section of the company's website. Or even if you want to, um, another example here is you know, I was looking on the city of Montreal website. Um, so that's Montreal.ca. I happen to be looking through their city council meeting minutes. I know that each city council meeting minute that's uploaded to, to, to the site has ODJ, which stands in, in French for Ordre du Jour. Um, so I can use that to search for, I'll just keep it really simple, for water. Um, and that did not work. <laughs> Let's try an English example. This is the website for the municipality of Campbell River. Searching, I know their news releases are all indexed with news in the URL. Um, so I can search in this way to, to sort of do a x-ray search of Campbell River's news releases. So each of these is an a, a item that's been filed as news under the city of Campbell River. Um, Bill says the site at uh, site MX or .ca narrow to Mexican based um, uh, Canadian sources or just those with the MX country or CA uh, extension. That is, is it possible that some Mexican or Canadian sources with .com extensions? Yeah, so the site MX narrows to those with the MX country extension. Um, so I think in that kind of search, and if we, we go back, we can try this. So we shouldn't see in this case, um, some of them do have the .com, but they also have the .mx extension. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. In other words, I don't think we would see any results that are that are just .com extension. Um, <clears throat> the file type search operator allows you to search for keywords within specific file types uploaded to a website. This works well for PDFs. Um, you know, I've used this to search for my own work. I'm just going to keep my tabs to a minimum. I've used this to search for my own work and see where it's been republished, sometimes in newsletters or academic articles or um, in this case, um, yeah, I'm not sure what some of these are, but um, publications essentially. Anything that's been uploaded as a PDF that has my name in it, uh, I can do a search in this manner. You can use this to search for say politicians' names as well. Um, in this case, this is a search I did with a group of Alberta journalists. Um, and what we found here um, was public letters that had been published on the web to then Health Minister of Alberta, Tyler Shandro. Um, also some documents from government websites. Here's a, a public disclosure statement from the Ethics Commissioner of Alberta, uh, an open letter signed by Tyler Shandro, so not just to this person. Um, 
and below that, we have some letters written by public interest organizations to this minister. And, um, you know, you can add operators here too. Um, you can pile them on and, and I'll show you some other examples, but maybe I see some interesting words or key terms or phrases that I could add to my search to narrow it even further. So here I'm added recommendations. So I want all of my results to have recommendations somewhere in the text. So this might narrow my search more to that genre of, you know, public letter or open letter to this person. And here we see, yeah, some new results from the United Nurses of Alberta, YW category, uh, YW uh, Calgary, sorry, et cetera. This works as well for XLS uh, file types um, and PPT file types. Uh, so, for example, um, keywords file type XLS. If I'm looking for tabular data or data sets, um, it, sometimes, as often when I click on these, it, it will take me directly to the download. Um, but you can see here, these are lists, data sets. I could again add another search operator if I want to limit my results to Canadian domains. And it also works for um, PowerPoints as well. So maybe I'm looking for, um, you know, government PowerPoints or presentations on a particular topic. And here you can see, um, so these aren't necessarily government sources, um, but you can see each of the, these as a PowerPoint presentation with my keywords from a .ca domain. Um, this file type search operator uh, doesn't work well with certain file type extensions, and I'm not sure why. For example, um, JPEG, get no results even though we can see xls results csv um oh so we have some results here um, but sometimes the csv uh, file type is not i found it doesn't work for some reason um but image files don't tend to work with this uh, file type extension um another question how does it work for public Google Docs, Google Forms, Google Sheets. So let's try. Uh, that's a good question. Google, so if we, I'm just going to keep it broad for now. But you can see I've searched a file type doc. Um, Let me just find another example. I don't, uh, so I don't think it works for, I sh this is a great question and I'm, I'm curious to find out the answer, but it looks like it doesn't work for, um, for Google options. Uh, as you say, sheets or docs. Um, but I'm going to look into that. Thanks for that question. I'll make a note of it. Um, <clears throat> I showed you an in-text example, so searching for keywords in the text. You can also search for keywords specifically in the title. Um, 
of a of a page or um, you know thinking in a news format this would be the headline of an article um, so if I were looking for um, you know uh, CBC articles about say dog parks I could put dog park in the title and each of these is a CBC article that is not only you know about or mentions dog parks but has dog parks in the in the title. And I think it's worth pointing out too that um, if you don't want to use Google, some of these search operators work in other search engines. So if I redo that um, search, let me just zoom in a bit. Certainly, Site I know works in Bing, and I believe um, Site works in DuckDuckGo as well. Um, I'm not sure about title, but let's give it a try. And yeah, so here we have 47 results. So that's quite a bit fewer than than um, I had with my Google search. But certainly, Site works well in in Microsoft Bing as well. And you can, whatever, if you're using another search engine, you can also simply look up um, search operators Bing or search operators DuckDuckGo or whatever the case may be. Um, so I see Sammy K says for text documents, um okay these are this is really useful um sammy i'm curious uh have you tried these in your reporting or have you um have any other tips or or advice on on these ones Oh, this is very cool. This is great. Um, thank you so much, Sammy. I didn't know about these, but I'll definitely incorporate these um, into future trainings. I appreciate that. And I'll, I'll add these as well to the to the links um, page. So you can see in this case, I just took the first example there searching using the site search operator. So not the file type search operator. Um, and then my keyword here, just hockey. Let's see if I can refine it a little bit. And then here we have, um, so this is a Google Doc that's simply an, an ebook um, with my keywords, Toronto and hockey. Um, that's fantastic. I'm really excited. I appreciate, I appreciate that tip, Sammy. Um, this one, uh, as well, I think I mentioned in previous session, um, the around X search operator. So this gives me, um, a way to search for basically in this example, um, I'm telling Google search for this phrase, this exact phrase within five words of this keyword or exact phrase. So this is, it's, is the search operator itself. This number in brackets can be any number you choose, but the smaller the number, obviously, the more likely it is my two keywords or search terms are going to be in the same sentence or the same paragraph. And here we have um, these, all of these results are from, uh, uh, from the same event where John Tory appeared at a ribbon cutting for this new development from Mizrahi developments. This also works for, um, also works with other search operators. So, um, you know, I could narrow this to a specific website. And here I've got videos where these two appear in the same, uh, within five words of each other.
And then here we have some more uh, complicated, I guess, or detailed uh, combinations of advanced search operators. So if you want to get into this in more detail, you can look for, um, there's often a lot of SEO type or recruiting type blogs and websites that go into what's sometimes called Google dorks, D-O-R-K-S, um, another way of saying a Google hack, or sometimes called Google X-ray searches. So you can look up Google dorks or Google X-ray searches to find um, how people have found ways to combine these search operators for really specific purposes. In this case, what you're looking at, um, and I can find the link for the, for the handout, but this came from a recruitment blog to try and find people who are in specific roles. So I'll put this, um, you can try it yourself with a sort of department or and thanks, Gwen, there for, um, so that link has a list to, uh, to Google operators, to commonly used Google operators. Um, but as I said, this example you're looking at here and that I just dropped in the chat, um, and I'll do a live example. This is a way for, of searching LinkedIn for people who work for a particular organization. So um, what I'm filling in at the end is the name of the company, the department, the organization, or the ministry, for example, um, where I want to find employees. So maybe um, Archwell Foundation. I think this is how we spell it. This is um, Prince Harry's foundation. And here I've got about 15 results. Each of these is um, a different uh, uh, title employee at the Archwell Foundation. So I dropped that in the in the chat. If you want to try your own search with a given um, you know organization or company or ministry department whatever and I'll as well put these um, search operator strings in the handout and then here's just another example of how you might combine search operators to um, really narrow your search in this case starting with a keyword adding you know uh, some more refined keywords in the title limiting to a specific domain and then limiting to a specific file format uh, for the linkedin search do you need to have an account um let me we could um i'm not sure because i'm sort of well let's see so i would see if even if i didn't have an account i'm not sure if i'm logged in or not but um i would see these results for sure on the google search page if i open one of those results um so if i wasn't logged in uh i might i'm not sure if i would see this page or not um give it a tr you could give it a try i'm not sure if i would be able to see some of this or all of this um but uh let me just open, uh, oops, I'm opening an incognito window. And uh, yeah, so I can see the page in incognito, so not signed in, I can see the page and then I get a prompt to sign in. Um, <clears throat> So Michelle mentioned sometimes you do need to open the prof to open the profile. You do need to be signed in, but not always. Um, Bill mentions I tried some of these searches in Google Scholar, which seemed to work. Um, so I'm curious about this link. Um, there, let's take a look. Okay, yeah. Um, so Bill, do you want to say more more about that? Sort of, is this um, did this search take you to Google Scholar or this was a search you did in Google Scholar? Uh, no, I just um, I just tried to repeat um, something in Google Scholar, which looks like it has a very inflexible um, 
uh, search engine and uh, some of these things seem to work like but for in um, insight um, colon CA it converted it to Canada like it said do you mean Canada okay um, and anyway so it, it seemed helpful I thought it was a very inflexible tool but maybe um, you know there's some rules that I can find there on that website or just apply the ones you've been using yeah, within Google Scholar, um, you're right. It's got these filters on the left-hand side there, so date range, um, type of article. But I, I haven't played around too much in Scholar, but I think you're right. It's limited in terms of the search operators there. Um, but you could also, if I just pull this over, um, oops. Uh, I wonder if we could, oops, <clears throat> site, and then caller.google.ca, uh, and then, uh, sorry, I'm jumping around a lot here. So we can, uh, it looks like, can use the to another way to search Google Scholar um, you know, even though its search functions are limited, is to search using site.scholar.google.ca. Um, moving on, so I talked before in, in previous sessions about how to search images. Um, so just to quickly recap that, if I go to Google, um, and I want to search an image, I want to see, you know, instead of using keywords, I want to see if this image and where this image has appeared before across the web. So getting into sort of verification territory here, but, um, I would simply right click on the image copy image address, and then within Google, I can click on this camera, paste that link, and find where else this image has appeared. So in this case, I can see um, uh, the news story, the original news story, um, where this image came from. I can verify what it is, when it would, was taken, et cetera. If I don't see good results, I see sort of similar images, but not exact matching images. You can see that's the case with some of these. Click on find image source to get only, that is not only in a matching image, but um, sometimes the results are better there. Um, I also wanted to recap looking for um, images you can use um, images that are under a Creative Commons license, meaning uh, you can use them free of cost. So here, you know, I'm just typed in the name of the town. Let's say I need an image to run with a story uh, here. Um, if I click under tools, or sorry, first images, then tools, Sorry, this is uh, popping up in French here. And here, this is usage rights. You'll see the same menu set up in English. Under Creative Commons licenses, <clears throat> I can see under details of license if I'm able to use this image um, with attribution or free of charge. Uh, in this case, I can't use it for commercial purposes. So if I'm a you know for-profit newspaper, I couldn't use it. But many Creative Commons licenses uh, allow you to use images free of charge with attribution. And again, I'm just typing in my keywords, going to image, license type, and Creative Commons. I wanted to point out as well that, um, you know, if you've got an image that you need to identify, you can use uh, uh, Google Maps 
in combination um, or it, as part of your image search, as part of the verification process, um, don't forget about Google Maps as a tool. So in this case, um, you know, I've got this image here, uh, you know, not super controversial, but maybe I see this on social media and it's, you know, accompanied with a rant about the state of young people or the state of welfare today. Um, I could find out more about this image if I've got geographical clues to go on. So I can see here the name of a store. I can see a phone number. So I might start with 514. And I can see my second result here is uh, a location, a, paper, a Facebook page. And I could go here. It's telling me maybe more information about this page, where they are. On Google Maps, I can find the location, pick up my little street view image person here in the bottom right-hand side. Uh, whoops. So this will take me to uh, Street View. I can see where it is. I can also um, look at other dates. So I could look back and see, okay, was this image um, you know, maybe that store didn't exist in 2022, but it existed back in, you know, 2015. So if you're researching an image um, and you've got some geographical clues, uh, consider Google Maps Street View as a way you can help verify uh, the location or find out more about that image and see historical images from that location, often going back um, at least a decade or more. Um, Twitter, Twitter's search operators um, still work pretty well, and there's a number of search operators uh, shortcuts that you can use for Twitter as well. Um, so these are um, the, the sort of most functional or most useful ones that I've found searching um, between specific dates since or until specific dates, searching for tweets from or to a particular person, searching for um, latitude or longitude. Um, uh, that is to say, searching for tweets from a specific location. Um, so just to uh, the uh, searching for tweets from a specific location, um, I can go into maps. I can choose my location. If I right click on my location, I get this dialog box that pops up with a latitude and longitude on the top. So I'll click there to copy it. And then within Twitter, I can use the operator geocode, paste that latitude and longitude. It's really important to delete this little space between them. And then some kilometer radius. So this is returning tweets from a phone or laptop or device um, whose location settings are on and are set to within uh, 10 kilometers of uh, Kenora, Ontario. And then I could combine that with keywords. I could combine that with a specific um, uh, place, but also a specific timeline. You know, maybe I want to see older tweets until, let's say, 2019. So here I've got my up until the 1st of January 2019. Uh, 
I want to see tweets from within 10 kilometers of Kenora, Ontario. Um, I could combine this with a keyword or also a video or media filter. So um, I've got the option of choosing media, uh, sorry, video, filter for video or filter for image or filter for link, but media covers all three. And here you can see, so the same top result because that already had a video, but the rest of these all contain um, either a link or an image or a video. Um, I can't remember if I did this one last time, but um, this could be a way to determine if, um, you know, a user you see on Twitter is a real person. Um, for example, do they have anyone wishing them a happy birthday? So in this case, tweets to, uh, I think that's Olivia Chow's Twitter handle. You can try different combinations of that, um, you know, happy birthday, happy B-day, in quotes, out of quotes, et cetera. Or if you just want to sort of triangulate somebody's birthday. Um, looking for someone's earliest tweets, um, I could simply narrow it down um, until a specific date based on when they joined. So joined February 2009. Um, and sorry, I want to move along here as we're um, coming close to the end. Um, in terms of searching TikTok, um, there's a few uh, tips here on how to search for content on TikTok. So the first example is searching for hashtags on a topic. And again, we're using the site search operator here. Um, the second example, searching for music or songs on TikTok um, with about a specific topic. And the final example, um, site tiktok.com in text, in this case, Freedom Convoy, searching for uh, keywords within the content or title of a, a TikTok post. So if we uh, do one of these examples here, and, and all of this is in Google, not in TikTok itself, um, but uh, site tiktok.com. I'm going to add the tag there and then my topic or keyword. So each of these is um, a, a video, a TikTok video with hashtag Ontario, with the Ontario hashtag. And you can see here, maybe I want to narrow this. I found a tag that is Explore Ontario. So I could take that, go back, and then uh, just explore that one tag. Or I can search for music. Um, with certain keywords um, in URL. Again, we'll try Ontario. So each of these is a song with my keyword Ontario. Let's try again. Each of these is a song with my keywords, but it looks here like it's searching for Doug and or Ford. Um, here we have, yeah, Doug Ford. And then finally, searching for um, content, TikTok content with keywords in the, in the text or in the title, in the description or the title of the post. So just TikTok.com and then in URL, in this case, Freedom Convoy.
Um, any other questions about that so far? Do I have any search tips for using um, advanced searches with archive.org? Um, I haven't tried any of these search tips with uh, archive.org, but we can take a look. Um, so let's try. Do you have um, an example there, um, EG, or something you want to add? Okay. Um, so let's say I'm trying to think of an example here. Um, I don't know if you have something in mind. Dividend stocks, money sense. Um, okay, so we can search archive.org in this way. Um, which is interesting, and, and this is actually a useful, very useful question because um, it would be use, good, good for me to look more into this because when we go, like when you use archive, uh, usually, so this is the Money Sense website. Um, if I enter a web page here, the sort of main purpose of Internet Archive or one of the main purposes of Internet Archive is to give you previously cached or saved versions of a website. Um, so this is just taking a minute to load here. But what we'll see is that whatever URL I enter, I get a calendar like this. So this has been saved, this website, the homepage of moneysense.ca has been saved 52,000, close to 900 times between 1999 and 2023. Um, but, you know, I would have to search through each of these snapshots to see like what's on the front page. Um, so this is an interesting one to explore to try and find that specific archived page with a specific keyword or um, a specific date, perhaps, that you're looking for. Um, CG says, uh, and, and so Sandy, Sammy mentions using the advanced search, um, uh, use using uh, archive.org's advanced search works well. Um, good to know. Um, CG asked, do these search operators work with uh, Google News? Any insight as to what is happening with date limitations on Google News? Um, I don't have any insight as to what's happening with, with date limitations on Google News, but it's a good question. I can try and find out um, more about that. Um, and thanks for the question, CG, and the tips from Sammy. And Lisa mentions also using using archives a lot. So this is a useful, uh, archive.org is a useful site to know about if you don't already. And just quickly, you can search as well, you know, not only cached versions of a website, but it's got uh, a whole bunch of different collections of um, uh, books, texts, um, videos, um radio and music archives um image archives so it's a really useful a really useful site um finally i want to talk about some some different um, more specialized search tools so these i'm just going to run through quickly um, some of these you may have heard about, and the Wayback Machine is a good one. So I'll drop that link in the chat as well. Um, um, what's my name dot web? So this is a way to search for usernames across multiple platforms to see where a username has appeared before. You can see here with mine. Um, it's showing up on Trello, Twitter, uh, TikTok, et cetera. So again, a way to uh, search for somebody. 
um, or to verify if an account you see is likely to be real or not. Opencorporates.com. So this is just a uh, repository of legal entity data repositories from all over the world. So it allows you to look up uh, companies or officers within uh, 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 companies as well. So I'm searching for uh, Irving, for example. And you can see here uh, the companies listed with that keyword. You can filter by jurisdiction on the right hand side there. And you can also search, uh, like I said, officer names or uh, individual names as well. Um, OCCRPLF, this is a um, repository of, um, in some cases, uh, leaked documents. Um, in some cases, um, government records and open databases. It's a tool designed for journalists and activists, um, designed for um, sort of following the money or financial reporting. There is a registration process. I haven't tried the registration process, but certainly if you say you're a journalist, um, you should be able to gain access. And it allows you to search for um, example, let's see what we can find. Just any, I just uh, typed in Canada, for example, but you can see here some of the types of data sets they have are uh, tenders for in-flight catering. Um, I can take a look at the data sets here. Countries, entity types. Um, I'm not super familiar with this one, but if you're doing this kind of reporting, um, you might want to take a closer look. Um, finally, StatsCan has this uh, repository of open data sets. Uh, just with um, infrastructure, Canadian infrastructure. So wastewater infrastructure, um, greenhouses, um, an open database of buildings, and obviously this is all uh, Canadian content, um, educational facilities, healthcare facilities, and cultural and art facilities. So each of these is fairly easy to look at. Um, I can download uh, you know, a giant file there, but also look at it through a map viewer here. So this is the open database of infrastructure, for example, and you can see each of these. Um, <clears throat> this We're in Toronto here. Gives me the name of a public transit stop or uh, bridges and tunnels, et cetera. And this is sort of somewhat related to the uh, somewhat related to the um, Wayback Machine and the way that you can search audio. I just stumbled across this, across this one, um, and it's a search engine for uh, audio specifically. So if I enter my search terms here, Justin Trudeau, you can see uh, 40 results for where this exact phrase, the name Justin Trudeau, has appeared um, on different uh, podcasts or radio shows. So finally, um, I want to take a, a look at um, Google Trends. Um, so I know um, some of you, or a lot of you, are probably familiar with trends. On, on the home page here, we see what's trending now. Um, what is, is, in other words, trending in the moment? Um, often these are sports, celebrities, um, you know, major news events. The more useful section, the more useful section, I think, for me, is the um, explore section where you can add your search terms. 
So here it's just taking me to frequency even without even adding a search term. It's taken me to top search queries within Canada in the last 12 months. So chat GBT, FIFA World Cup, Super Bowl 2023, et cetera. Um, but I can add my own search terms and I can refine my regions. So for example, if I search for Gaza, I can see in Canada, narrow it to the last 30 days since the beginning of the war, October uh, 7th to 9th there. Um, you can see the search interest on a scale of 0 to 100, where 100 represents maximum search interest. So what's that saying is, um, you know, the, the algorithm takes a sample of searches and compares this search term, Gaza, to all other searches within Canada within the last 30 days and assigns it a, a value of search interest based on its proportional uh, popularity to all other searches. So it's not necessarily saying that this was the most searched term, um, Gaza, on October 9th across Canada. It's saying relative to all searches in Canada on this day, that's where Gaza uh, achieved a peak or a maximum search interest. Um, a couple things I want to point out here is that um, I can add, I can compare search terms. And once I compare a search term, I know this is the same search term, but what I can do here is under edit filters, I can look at another country. So I could compare searches for Gaza within the last 20 days between Canada in blue here and within Germany over the last 30 days. So it is possible to do sort of an intra-country comparison with the same search term on, on Google Trends. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, um, let's move this back to Canada. Mm. Okay, if we reset it there. Um, I can I can drill down at a provincial level. Um, so I'll get to the question in a sec. I can drill down to at a provincial level um, here. So if I'm in the menu and I select Canada, I could go to any of the provinces. Um, it's not possible in trends to search at a city level, um, but one tip I've heard from, from reporters is to make your city the search term. Um, narrow your search to the most recent window possible. And then look at related queries down here. So people who are searching Montreal are also searching these terms. Um, as a way to get a sense of what people are searching for, you know, recently in the past four hours within your city. Another um, search tip I've heard about in trends, I'm just going to widen this a little bit to seven days, is to just search for the start of questions. Get a sense of what people are searching for. Uh, who, what, when, where, how. So I've got my settings to Canada in the last seven days. This is not necessarily relevant, the geographical interest for this beginning of my questions, but here, again, looking at the related queries can get a sense of what questions people are asking Google. Um, Matthew Perry, again, often, you know, celebrity stuff rules Google Trends, sports stuff rules Google Trends. But sometimes, um, you know, this, especially during elections, this can raise questions, raise interesting questions about what an audience, what readers might be interested in. And you can see even just changing from the past seven days to less than four hours, um, the related queries, the questions people are asking um, change. 
So just to get to the questions here, um, Sharon asks, is the number attached to the search word means percentage or the total counts? So it, it's not, it doesn't exactly translate that, that search interest there, you know, maximum search interest, it doesn't exactly translate to either. Um, you, uh, one way of interpret it is saying um, a maximum search interest or a peak in search interest for that topic or subject. Um, but it's neither a percentage of all searches nor a total count of all searches for that topic. Um, I'll, I'll put in the handout an FA, a link to the FAQ page for Google Trends um, and also some examples of Google Trends in reporting. So you can see how other news outlets have attributed um, Google Trends data. Um, not in my color asks, I so know we're running a bit over, but I'll just get to these questions. If you have to go, um, I understand. Thanks, thanks for coming and um, you'll get the recording. Um, not in my color asks, can you narrow trends to a particular platform like a social media site? Um, no, but you can, so no, short answer, you can't narrow it to a specific platform. Um, you can narrow down though the type of um, sorry, I'm just uh, fiddling here. You can narrow the type of search by category. So for example, let's say you're interested in, um, you want to <clears throat> look at search for a particular topic uh, or a subject jam, but you're not talking about jam the fruit. Um, you're about like a musical jam. So in that case, I might want to select, um, let's see, we don't have a music category, but we have a arts and entertainment category. Let's broaden this. And you can see Christmas jam, Spotify jam session, jam pedals. Whereas if I made this uh, food and drink, you can see the related queries are grape jelly, grape jelly recipe, pumpkin jam recipe. So it, adjusting the search categories can be, again, not searching a specific platform, but searching um, if you have a word that could be interpreted in different ways, um, you can um, be more precise in that way. Um, finally, about language, Zach asked, what about language? Your results for Montreal were in English, um, but surely there's more searching being done there in French. Um, yeah, so you can, depending on your Google settings, um, you know, if I changed my Google settings to French um, and typed my words in in French, that's how it would do, it, it would search in French. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, although Montreal is, um, you know, almost 50% English. So, you know, in, in, in Montreal, I see your point, but um, if I was doing Quebec City, for sure, um, I would get more useful results if I'm searching in French. Um, however, you'll see here, um, Justin Trudeau, let's just, on that. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm searching for a topic, uh, Justin Trudeau here. So you can see, uh, trend seems to be a bit glitchy today, to be honest with you, I'm not sure what's going on. But you can see here, some of my results say search term, and some have a description underneath. So where it has a description um, underneath, it's a search topic, which means um, that's a broader, uh, if, if you see a description, you should go with the search topic because that does include, okay, anyone who searches in other languages, for example. Let me see if I can find, yeah, I don't know why it's, I don't know why it's being glitchy here. It's like delayed or something. But um, if I had the option, you know, Christmas, with a description underneath, it means it's a topic. So uh, it would include searches for Noel, um, Christmas in other languages, nicknames for Christmas, whereas Christmas 
or any search term where it just says church term is essentially just those words in that order. Um, so I think I'll, I'll wrap up there. Thanks for your patience in, in going over. Um, I realized I squeezed in Google Trends a little bit at the end, but we're going to cover trends as well in the um, election tools search. Um, and um, I'll include links in the handout as well to um, some different articles on how journalists have used Google Trends. Um, there's a great publication substack called WTF is SEO, which covers um, Google Trends as well from a publisher perspective. Um, I'll put drop that link in there as well. Thanks so much to um, Sammy and others for your great tips. I really appreciate those. Um, and I'm excited to, to share those in, in upcoming trainings. Um, as usual, email me if you have any questions. I will send you the um, message thread since we had a lot of good questions and suggestions. Um, I can download the message thread from this session and include it in the material that I hand out afterwards. So thanks everybody, take care and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.